Professor Potter, thank you very much indeed for giving us some time, just a few minutes, to uh, really describe, sum up your big lecture today. Uh, you are the chairman of the uh, Education Committee of Estro, and you were talking about uh, gynecological cancer as, as a model for taking translational research and turning that into educational modules. I didn't get to see the lecture here about so what were the key points? Well, the key element was there has been quite some progress in the last 10 years in a specific aspect of gynecological radiotherapy, which is brachytherapy. Yeah. It had not moved for 50 to 60 years significantly. You know, this was Manchester system. Now, image has been integrated into that brachytherapy approach. And it means now that this is the dose prescription, the target contouring, is linked to individual anatomy. So we, don't, we no longer look up Rawson Patterson's textbook about how to do it. Is that, no. Thank we goodness for that. It's about time that happened. It As a fellow Scot, I have to uh, praise him for what he did then, but it was, you say, it was 50 years ago. No, well, that's even, even longer, that's mm -hmm. 70 to 80 years ago. And uh, what was happening then was that this has been taken into practice at some major institution in Europe which was mainly Paris, Leuven, and Vienna, and uh, linking it to an, uh, an MRI, which is the best for imaging uh, gynae. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, also looking at the response to radio chemotherapy to look how the tumor shrinks and to focus at the time of brachy, which is usually after five weeks, to focus on that target and to put a high dose in that target and to put a low dose in the adjacent organ at risk. This has been quite some approach which uh, developed quite fast. However, what we did not have was sort of a language how to communicate this. Sure. This meant, in terms of knowing that the old ICAU report, which was from 85, the ICU 38, and the old Manchester upon a system where I was coming from, was not a communication tool for that time. And it was nice that in the European group, especially around Estro and Jack Estro, which is a bracky of Estro, could sit together, different people but good friends, and try to bring their concepts together. That happened in particular between Paris and Vienna. Mm -hmm. I'd say with the moderation of Leuven, Eric van Limberg and Christine Heimel and Richard Potter. And in a couple of years, we could arrive at a new language which enabled communication between Paris and Vienna but also with, between Manchester and Paris, which was for the first time, and let's say old MD Anderson, Fletcher schools, and so on. And this meant that we made some progress in the health practice of how to treat uh, cervical cancer appropriately. On the other hand, also could move into a communication issue, could publish on this language problem with quite some publication which was accepted uh, not only in Europe but also in the US and also in other countries and this paved really the way to going for more. It meant then that we also went for education and we used the tool which ESTO provides, the good tradition of ESTO teaching courses. We set it up in 2004 mm -hmm. and we have been teaching now more than 1,000 uh, people, customers over the years in these ESTO teaching courses. And this is now even going from brachytherapy to integrate also external beam radiotherapy and of course also chemo radiation, which is of large importance. And this group, the teaching faculty and around them, people who were interested from many European institutions, also came together in a sort of a network. Because there was not only the challenge for education, there was also a challenge for clinical research and translational research on top of that, because it was just a field moving. There were a critical mass of researchers at certain institutions, and we put our efforts together in an academic research network mm -hmm. with a link to the industry, supporting some sort of meetings and having sort of work packages for contouring, for applicator reconstruction, treatment planning. And this went quite well, and even more publication came out, more studies uh, went on, developed and there is quite a set of publications now coming from that network mm -hmm. as apart from well different institutions like Vienna, like Paris, like Leuven, like Aarhus, 
who also took part. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was, I think, quite essential for the field because it seems to be that it is moving now. Yeah. It has been accepted even between the North Americans and uh, the Europeans not to start fighting again on these basic concepts, maybe well, on some questions to be put forward, some answers which will be found in the future. And the next step from here, 2010, what about ESTRO 2012? Well, in, ra in regard to Gaini, there is one major issue which I just want to address. Sure. The problem here is that this is a very academic structure with some support from the industry. However, it would need a more firm structure and we put together a roadmap where to go, which means going from translational, for imaging, for technology, also to clinical research. Mm -hmm. And we even started a study, which is a study on 3D imaging, adaptive approach, multi-center, European, also American, also Asian, also South American, now participating. And next to that, clinical research, which is in this EMBRACE trial integrated. However, these are limited resources because the problem is to get appropriate funding here. It's very expensive too. It's quite expensive. It's a clinical trial bit. It's a clinical trial. Yeah. Yeah. It's a 3D clinical trial mm -hmm. which needs quality assurance. We are all building them up from limited resources. And what was interesting, we put a big application to the FP7 program, mm -hmm. the last health call number four, uh, put it all together with clinical research and one point even on education and dissemination, strong point, with a lot of partners all over the world, the striking point was that excellence in science was attributed high, implementation was high, but the relevance was questioned. And this is for an expected effect of 20% increase in local control. So then it means we are stuck and there is this paradoxon in cervix cancer on the research scene which means as we heard these days at ESTO from famous Xavier Bosch sure. who is a leading guy of course in the preventive field that technically cervix cancer can be prevented on the one side technically. So why waste money on developing better treatment? On the other hand it means that if you <coughs> see at the demographics of development that there is half a million nowadays <coughs> suffering from cervix cancer a year worldwide sure. and this will likely develop to one million in the next decade. So, and the question is do we invest money for a, a cancer which in principle this can be prevented? Well of course we've had that argument about lung cancer for a very long time and nobody has sorted the smoking issue and uh, nobody has given money to lung cancer treatment research and this has got to change and luckily in lung cancer it is changing and I think it's changing because of the molecular research which is driving the change I think the translational argument is very strong um, and, and I, I can't imagine that the, uh, the issue of cervical cancer is going to go away as you say especially in low-income countries um, South America, um, cervix cancer is commoner than breast cancer. Um, we need to continue to... Uh, the same is true for India, so sure. it's, it will be for the next decades, mm. likely for the whole century, mm. stay quite a relevant problem. So we still need an educational and dissemination solution. Yeah, We are having that for ESTO, mm. but let's say on a uh, well-structured uh, level with ESTO, mm. but we would need uh, a more complex network with just also an amount of people doing research sure. and linked to education as in other programs for different cancer sites. So tell me about the hot topics in, in the translational area in, in, in gynae cancer at the moment. Of course it's the HPV, yeah. it's also for the prognosis of radiation therapy. Mm -hmm. um, the other by marker, predictive marker? They are not, they are not really on the market. Oh. However, we can identify some patterns of response during uh, treatment, mm -hmm. which seem to predict for outcome, which is in principle a very classical one, sorry mm -hmm. for this, the infiltrative versus the expansive tumor. Mm -hmm. It means the infiltrative has a high risk of recurrence mm -hmm. and spread uh, to distant disease, of course. Mm -hmm. So where's the education uh, priority going to go within ESTRO? 
well, using uh, this model, you're going to take the sort of same sort of uh, approach to other um, malignancies? I wanted to make the point that, well, gynae brachytherapy is not a major field of mm -hmm. ovalesto. But what developed in gynae brachy was that there were different challenges to sit together to develop together a joint language, mm -hmm. to sit together to develop a network with young people. In our network, it's mainly young people. Mm -hmm. It's not people like me only. And then, based on that, to do education and to do well, focused research with well, local, regional, national money. And of course, we are trying to get international money. And there are big fields in radiation oncology, of course, and ESTO is strong in, in various fields, uh, where the whole field of radiation oncology could profit very much that uh, people were closer together make multi-center clinical trials, for example, with advanced technology, what we do in Brachy, but yeah. do it also, let's say, in lung cancer, or do it in mm -hmm. prostate or rectal. It is partly done, mm -hmm. but it's very much done in the sense of testing a drug of yes or no. Not but, an approach. But we need more. Sure. And we need a multi, multidisciplinary approach. Yes. And this is, uh, I think, very, very challenging. Mm. Well, these trials are complex uh, in their design and also in their performance mm. and that's what I wanted to make. At the end you come up with recommendations, you come up with uh, guidelines, you have a network, you are disseminating. Mm. So I think for the model of ESTO to go to disseminate research results, to promote research, to do education at the same time in Europe, in Central and Eastern Europe, in the developing world maybe, this is a big issue and ESTO has a program now uh, launched during the last years with a three-year program running and I'm just coming from such a committee meeting we uh, <clears throat> founded such a committee now with a different re region of the world where the ESTO program especially with the basic courses on physics on biology on technology on imaging is offered to Asia to China to India to Southeast Asia to Middle East to South America and the program is running, it's running very well, and we are trying to set up a group where this program can evolve further, integrating the activities, of course, taking place in China, India, and, well, I think in the midterm also modulating our courses, more, in, more implementing uh, the faculties of these different countries mm -hmm. with renowned people. And we'll just have in a couple of months the first uh, Gaini course in India, mm -hmm. where Service Cancer is first... Uh, with also three renowned uh, Indian teachers within our faculty. Good. So ESTRO is going global? ESTRO is going global beside Europe. No, no, we have in our 3,000 participants of courses uh, this year, there's one third non European. European. One, thir one third Central Eastern, one third Western. Fantastic. Well, we are quite proud of that. Yeah, sure, you should be. Because we think it's, uh, it's a good development. Professor Potter, thank you very much indeed for giving us uh, your experience. Really most enjoyable. Okay, thank you. me too. Thank you very much. Okay.